come correct or don't come at all. This is the Hard Zog Hustle Podcast. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And we're talking about the hustle, strategy, and mindset you need to win in the areas of your finance, your purpose, and your future. You know what I'm saying? If you have heart and you want to learn how to activate the power of your hustle, then this is the podcast for you, baby. For you, baby. Congratulations. And now, your host. Anthony and Janilka Hartzog. Welcome to another episode, another edition of the Hartzog Hustle Podcast. My name is Anthony Hartzog, and I am joined here by my beautiful co-host and wife, Janilka Hartzog. What's going on, man? Hello, everyone. Pleasure to see everyone again. Pleasure to see them. You go, <laughs> it's just literally just me here. It's not like anyone's here with us. That's how you talk. Kind of like, you know, you know our audience is watching. Well, yeah, we appreciate you guys being here yeah. again. <laughs> um, if you are new here, number one, we appreciate you being here. If you're also a returning listener and subscriber, we super appreciate you guys being here because without you guys, we would not be here. And even if it was just us, maybe we would still be here. So, <laughs> so you know, continue to subscribe, comment, uh, write a review, share with others, letting people know who we are, what we're doing, what we're talking about. You know, if something's resonating with you, shoot in our DMs, let us know. Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Week after week after week, we are shooting for at least a year straight, and we are more than halfway there. We are more than halfway Unbelievable. there. Yes. <laughs> When we first started, we were like, listen, let's just see how it goes. Let's now now we're halfway there. You can't just stop now. You can't just... And then when the year hits, what do you do then? Maybe we take a break. I don't know. But until then, we're going to keep going as long as you guys keep showing up because we always appreciate it. So, yes. But without further ado, we are going to do the review of the week. The review of the week. I'm going to get some... That's like a drum roll thing. You know, <laughs> with, this, with, with this set that we have, we can make sound effects. We can put sound effects on here. And then you just like click it you like just, a DJ? You just press a button, yeah. Oh, that would be nice. So like clap hands, bomb drop, like funk flex. Yep. Yeah, get to it. I'll do that. Hope then the technical issues happen when you go press a button and nothing happens. You're like, well, okay. You should have left it alone? You should have left it You should have left well enough alone. Okay. It always takes at least 30 minutes to set up this room anyway. So imagine trying to do that on top of Minimum. it. Minimum. I say X marks the spot, but hey. Neither <laughs> here nor there, but we are here. Minimum. So for the review of the week, we are going with a, don't know how to say your name. How would you say that? Jube. A Jube. Jube. Why are you saying it with an accent? Because it could be French. It could be Haitian. Jube. It couldn't be just Jubert. Could be Jubert, but Jube. <laughs> So you said, can't wait for more. Every week I'm excited to hear the heart zogs. Being married with children and being stuck in our high paying nine to fives made us complacent. But each week the fire is burning more to get out and create our own hustle. Keep them coming. Thank you, A. Jube. Jube. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, for leaving that review and being excited and having that fire. We hope that we continue to. Put that fire under you know what, so that you guys could go on and do bigger and better things. That they said they um she that Jube said they have uh, high paying nine to fives and mm -hmm. they're looking for more. And that's that's who we're talking to. Not just the high paying nine to fives, but also just people who have nine to fives and they're looking to turn their hustle into profits and freedom. That's all we're talking about, you know, on the the Hard Talk Hustle podcast. We're of course sharing our hustle um in our journey, but we're also sharing journeys of others. So keep posted. And speaking of journeys of others, I was on social media. Someone sent me a mm. a DM. Okay, what they said. And this came in pretty recent. <laughs> What's T? The T, the T of the week. <laughs> That's what we should do. A T of the week. So someone sent us. Hey, we should do that. T of the week. So the, someone sent a DM, and they were at. It was a. It was an influencer, and they said these influencers are out here, not scamming people. But these influencers are out here, lifestyle marketing a lifestyle they don't have. Uh huh. So the person went to the dealership and they uh, went there to went to Mercedes and they got a G wagon. But the only difference is they didn't buy the G wagon. Okay. They Sometimes a, you can rent G wagons. No, no, that's different. They went to the, they went to the dealership okay. with a Louis Vuitton bag, roses, flowers, and a cameraman and took pictures in front of the G wagon. Oh. And posted it on their social media, basically saying they just bought it and tagged the dealership. 
Really? Now the real tea is that the dealership came back. And oh said no, that. these these businesses be messy. <laughs> like Wendy's be on Twitter getting in everybody. So the dealership came back and was like, "Hey, I just want to make you guys aware that this person did not buy this." Why he had to do he or she? They need to make us aware. Listen, they tagged the dealership and the dealership was like, "Hey, just making you guys aware that this person didn't buy this car from us." We see that they tagged the dealership and they had a whole post That's around them it. For doing it. And the purpose of the post was to market their lifestyle. So we talked about lifestyle marketing. Mm, okay, so you know who the influencer is? No, that I have no that? idea. Somebody oh, okay. sent That's it to us, just pointed it out, and they just said, "Hey, I know it's not you guys, but it's funny how people market their lifestyle in different ways." And yeah. I think about us when we talk about lifestyle marketing. Like our lifestyle is this: like our lifestyle is traveling with our daughter, you know, having fun, family and friends, yeah, going out, having a good time. That's our lifestyle marketing. Our lifestyle marketing is not, which is nothing wrong with, but that's just not a lifestyle. We're only marketing. What we currently do on a daily basis. Until I get the Bentley in my afterlife, then that would be part of our lifestyle. Okay, maybe the Bentley becomes <laughs> a lifestyle marketing tool, but that but was now it ain't. <laughs> so what's your what's your thoughts on lifestyle marketing with that? Uh, I don't have a problem with lifestyle marketing because I'm just thinking about the bigger brands. They go mm-hmm. in front of things that they may not own, but they still do it. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know who I can think of. Like, if I think about the Kardashians, like, they don't own, well, now Kylie and Kim do own um, planes, private jets. But some of these companies hire them just to market that, like, that that lavish, like, oh, wow, that type of stuff. So I don't necessarily feel like there's something wrong with it, but I guess... Why make it seem like you bought it? On that's, the same, that's what the challenge is. And the is. same thing. Because, I mean, you could go somewhere and rent it. You could rent it. I could rent a G-Wagon. I don't know where. But I'm sure you can mm-hmm. rent it or a Tesla or something like that. That doesn't mean I bought it. But yeah. I think it's a, I guess people are upset at the perception they're trying to get across. Yeah. But maybe, I don't know. That's what their followers like. That's what their followers want. I mean... People like, I mean, we used to say that all the time. We would post what? No, that was something different when your tweet went viral. But we would post like average pictures, if you will, average pictures and stuff like that. But the vacation pictures just hit different on yeah. the timeline. I mean, now timeline don't want no pictures, but <laughs> definitely don't. Before it just was different. People just like to see, oh, what they doing? You know, when people when. At least people that I follow, when they're on vacation and they got a room tour and they got, I'm committed to that. Like, what are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> What's the excursion that we going on? Where mm-hmm. are we going to dinner? Do I need to save this place? So people just like nice things. I I agree with you. <laughs> I think we all like nice things. Like, I could, I got, I'm wearing my watch right now, right? And this could be a form of social, this could be a form of lifestyle marketing. Yeah. But it was something I wanted for over two years. Yeah, but only you know that. Only I know that. So somebody when, just looking in, yeah, I, ha- makes up their whole story. So now, story now as that to we're what, talking about my watch, I got a Rolex, and let's say the Rolex was like fifteen thousand dollars, and I said this Rolex was eight. I was able to buy this Rolex with my cleaning business money. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't be a lie, but I'm saying the fact that this is something I wanted for a long time. I say that for it. I'm wearing it because I like the I like the watch, but now if I went to the Rolex store. And I took a picture with the watch on and I walked out the store without the Rolex. That's where the issue comes into play, in my opinion. I, I mean, the, they probably like, who, how is anybody going to know is what they're probably thinking. I mean, I wouldn't know when they had tagged the place because in this day and age, <laughs> I know how these stores be rolling. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. have done that. But I, that's probably what they were thinking. Like, how yeah. is anybody going to know? You know, that I don't really have this or not. But other thing is like, but everybody's different. Like, why am I lying about my life? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm thinking about. Why would I even do all that? I could care, not to be rude, (laughs) but I really don't really care that people think that I have A, B, and C. But that's the perception that you have to give off, especially if you're selling things online, I feel. Not have to, though. I'm going to say... It's how you... It's your niche. Like, what what people perceive of you, How what people think. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not that you have to, but you said you were yeah. going to say something. No, no, no you're, 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 you're spot on. It's, but I think the, the lifestyle part of it comes into play when you have a brand that's attached to your face. Mm-hmm. When you have a brand that's attached to your personality, you have a brand that's attached to who you are. So the heart harmony is a brand. Yeah. Uh, our, our, our wedding, wedding hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> that we created and it's become a business is a brand. It's our brand. It's mm-hmm. our it's our face. Somebody couldn't come in and say that they had the heart ceremony. Somebody couldn't come in and start advertising what we do and who we are mm-hmm. without it being us. Right. Like that's our brand attached to us. Yeah. But 
our cleaning business is a faceless brand. Mm-hmm. No one knows. People may know who we are, and who, if you do your research, mm-hmm. but it's not something that's attached to our likeness. It's not as, something that's attached to who we are as people. Mm-hmm. So that's. I think I feel like that's the only reason we have to have a brand or um, a brand that has to advertise a certain lifestyle when it's attached to your likeness. So I mean, that's what we, I mean. That's some of what we want to talk about today. Like a faces brand. Like how, people listen to us, right? And I'm sure many of you have ideas and things that. That can become a business that you don't even know that can become a business. Yep. Um, his thing is always, what do people come to you for? Mm-hmm. What is something that people come to you for? Family, friends, and you just give the information because you love to, because you have the information, you know it, and you're not even thinking that probably can be a business, right? Yeah. Um, so let's discuss for people that may think, you know, I don't want to have my face on social media and stuff like that the way we do. And I think it's a slippery slope because i there are some brands that i feel like you don't need to have a face to i totally agree um but then it's some on the other side of it i feel like that's what make people connect to you and want to buy from you because they know who you are and they like you but you can showcase your voice through copy right through written your captions and i don't know just other things i think about like for better worth is that his is that their name mm-hmm. on Instagram? We have no idea who the hell they are. Yeah. It's a faceless brand. Yeah. They use card. They do uh, emo- is it emojis. Emojis. Emojis um, for their picture, for their icon. We have no idea who this person is. White, black, woman, male, big, tall. We have no idea. But they have thousands of followers and people follow along. So I think it can work in both ways. But I think my personality is so powerful that I don't know if I can hide it. <laughs> I, I think it, it. I don't think you have to. I'm talking about. I think we, I don't want to talk about two different things. Are we talking about building a brand or building a business? They are one in the same. A Biz- brand. A brand can be a business. A brand can be, but a business. business doesn't have to have a brand. What business doesn't have a brand? Like, uh, uh, okay, that's a great question. So, a business that doesn't have a face attached to the brand. You could have a brand, you could have a faceless business, but more than likely you're not going to have a faceless brand. Absolutely. Is that, is that <laughs> what I'm trying to say? So like Louis I Vuitton, agree. Louis Vuitton is a business. Yeah. But it's Walmart, also a brand. Target, Macy's, all of those are yeah, brands. They're and also businesses. a brand and they're also a business. Yeah. But they don't have any face attached to them. Well, they did when you're talking about like who's the CEO and owners and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. you don't go to Louis Vuitton because you know who the CEO Louis, is. Who Louis is, yeah. <laughs> King Louis. You know that that's who it is? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I assuming, say, I'm assuming that's who Louis Vuitton's based on. I don't okay, know. Go but, ahead. <laughs> I'm like, okay, how I'm did joking. you get this information? But I'm saying like, if you're building a business, like I want people to get out of the stereotype that your business has to have a face attached to it. Right. It does not have to have a face attached to it. I think that it. social media does that, make you feel that way. So in our cleaning business, we don't go on TikTok. We don't go mm-hmm. on Twitter. We don't go on Instagram. We don't go on Facebook. We don't do any of those platforms where people know who we are to get clients. But people ask us about that all the time. Yeah. Our cleaning business, we are not dancing. We are not. We are don't not. Shady. We're not doing none of the, the woes. We're not doing the reels. We're not, not doing showing any of no that. No cleaning products. We, uh-huh. You don't have to build a business that's attached to your likeness or, or your face. But you have to figure out what type of businesses will allow for that. Now, if we did turn our cleaning business or any business that we have, even our virtual assistant business, if we turn those businesses into brands that had our faces attached to it, maybe we would make more. If we took to social media and started doing reels and, and TikToks and... Because you grow you grow a following. Yeah, and you, grow a fa- you grow a following. And people say, oh, well, but then at the end of the day, it's not required of us. So would you, if you had to do Hachimoni over again, would you do it the same way again or would you want to be faceless? I'd keep, I'd keep the attachment to it. You do it over. You yeah, because it was based thing. over our wedding hashtag. Yeah, I don't think that. I guess for us, for our for our brand uh, or business, because Archimony is a business as well. I don't think that it would be where it was without a face. But I could be absolutely wrong. Obviously, there ain't no way to tell. But I don't think it would be as big as it is without a brand, without our face, because then we're able to speak through. But for those people, you know that. You're not really an introvert, but I don't know how to explain who what your type, but someone that may be introverted that doesn't want to put a face to it, what what can they do? 
What business can they start in this day and age that wouldn't have that cleaning business? Now's a good time for a commercial break. Shout out to Cleaning Business University. If you guys didn't know, we own a seven-figure cleaning business, and our goal is to create, help you create side income outside your nine-to-five by starting this business. Now, you don't have to clean any houses. Um, you don't have to do any of the work. Your goal is to find people who do the work, match them with people who need the work done, and you take a profit of that split. So check out cleaningbusinessuniversity.com. Uh, Link will be in the show notes. And so your question was, what businesses can you start? So going back to the other point, so... I realize I say this I say this a lot, but I I'm a natural introvert, meaning I it takes time and energy for me to go out uh, and, socialize. And, and socialize. Now, can I do it? Absolutely, without a problem. <laughs> is that my recommended? Is that my first choice to do it? Absolutely not. I do it because it is a learned trait that I have. But my natural side is just being an introvert, so I can be an extrovert when necessary. I can be an introvert by nature. That's just who I am. So when you talk about building a business that doesn't have a face attached to it, you have to think about the purpose of the business. How are you going to get clients? I think that's where you start. So now mm -hmm. you think about, all right, what business am I going to start and how am I going to get clients? So throw a business out there. Cleaning business? I'm not going to say cleaning business. It could be any business in the world. It could be um, any clothing. Clothing. Let's do a clothing. So let's say clothing. clothing. Brand. Yeah. You could start it. Let, let's say with a clothing brand. So you could start clothing business, not even a brand. You do not need a face attached to that business because- You don't need your face. You don't need your face. You have you other people's face. faces. You have yeah. other models. You models. can do it mm -hmm. where you just have it. Like you go to Macy's and they just have the clothes on the mannequin. Like you don't see anybody- Fair. Like you don't see anybody's faces on these mannequins. They don't like put a, they don't have a face, a fake face on it. Like you can build a business without having a brand attached to it. Now, makeup artist, makeup artist. Yes, okay. you don't have to have your face attached to that business. Now, if you did have it, let's say you're a a clothing designer and you are advertising your business. Yeah, you may be the one doing the marketing for your clothes when you first start. Mm -hmm. You may be the one doing the, most of the marketing because you're the only person that could afford it because mm -hmm. you own the business. You don't have any employees. So that's one way you could do it. The other way you could do it is if you hire, you outsource the work. So, and I'm going to stick with the clothing brand side of it. So you could outsource it where you have those clothes shipped directly to the consumer and all they see on the website is just the shirt. There's no mannequin. There's no size fitting. It's just the shirt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would be another way that you could outsource the labor. They take the pictures of it and they just mail it to the person. Right. You don't have to do that yourself. You don't have to put your face out there. Mm -hmm. So those are just some ways you can build a business without having a brand attached to it. Yeah. I think in this day and age, people feel obligated that they have to have a social media presence mm -hmm. and that that means that it's you. And I think that that's where we not go wrong, but that's where things can be different. And a lot of our students always ask us, so are you not on Instagram? Are you not on TikTok? We're like, no, we don't we don't want to be in that capacity. But you can be if you want to. So I think knowing that you have the option for both. And what I do want to discuss is what would you say is like the pros and cons of it? I have a con big time of having our face attached. What would you say Go is ahead. a pro and con? So, well, I have two cons. Having your face attached to a business. To a business. Mm -hmm. I have two cons. One would be, you got to watch what you say. Yeah. <laughs> you got to watch what you say anywhere. Like, if you're recording, if you're writing on Twitter, anywhere, because people take what you say personally and transfer it to your business. Y'all done seen it about people getting canceled. They say something on the block and they calling up their job, telling them what they said on the block mm -hmm. and getting people fired and things like that. So that's one con I would say you have to. Have that's to. why businesses say that your social media is not attached mm -hmm. to their business brand. But Your you also brand. still need to not mention their name or something yeah. is in like these. But they'll still fire now. you, even though it's not attached. They'll still fire you. Yeah. Like with my job, it was my job found my social media. Oh yeah, that's a great example. My job found my social media, <laughs> and it wasn't necessarily a problem. But they saw that I was building a, a personal brand, mm -hmm. a personal brand that's attached to my business. Now, if we if, all in the business, now, now they all in the business. Now they're in the business. <laughs> so now if the if the heart Tremony was a faceless business that was driving revenue without having our faces attached to it, mm -hmm. talking about financial literacy, talking about generational wealth, talking about ways to make money outside your nine to five, they would have had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. They would just see the heart Tremony logo and they wouldn't have even seen it. 
if we never went on Good Morning America I'm about or to say, Black Now Enterprise, we got our faces on these big, these big places, and people are like, hmm. Exactly. You go on Good Morning America, Black Enterprise, people start watching you. Yeah. Your face is attached to it. Mm-hmm. There's no way to avoid it in that instance. But if we started it without having our face on it, maybe we would have said, you know what? We don't feel comfortable having our face on Good Morning America. Here is some content we posted. Here is a, a website article. Or maybe we just have video. Or just, maybe we just have something where we're just talking over a video or something like that. Or uh-huh. talking over a blog article or post. Good so, Morning America hit us up the next day that it was in our house, please. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so when you're talking about building a business without a face, like that's a huge con of it. That's, having your face attached to it. That's one con. Watching what you say, it's a lot of cancel culture in this day and age, so j- just be mindful of that. The other con, I would say, is disconnecting from disconnecting. I mean, that's probably an issue with social media in general, but when the business is like, when it is a business, sorry, when social media is a business, then knowing when to disconnect and say, okay, I'm on too much or things like that. Mm-hmm. Cause that's the discussion that we talk about. Like I said to him, we will be going on vacation soon. We'll be going on a lot of vacations coming up, but we're going on one vacation, a bunch particular, of vacations you'll see. particularly soon uh, family reunion where I'm like, we need to discuss what that's going to look like mm-hmm. for you. I mean, I disconnect most of the time because most of the things um, Anthony is running when it comes to the heart brand and business. So it's easy. It's way easier for me to disconnect. I could go on that page twice a day. Mm hmm. You live on the page. Like, there's a difference. Like, you barely go to your personal yeah. page, right? Um, and so we have that discussion. So I see that as another con. We have a discussion. I'm like, what is that? What is that week going to look like for you? Because it's a perk that you can work from anywhere. Like, that's a good thing. But then also, when do you actually disconnect and do nothing? That's a good question. I don't know. When I, <laughs> when I go figure that out, I'll let you know. So that would be another con <laughs> that I would say with having um, a business slash brand that has your your face attached to it. So there's two sides of that. So yes, the there's there is some unplugging that can be done from the businesses. Mm-hmm. So our service based businesses, meaning the business that we have other people working mm-hmm. and on doing it on a daily basis, those are more easily to be unplugged from. Because right. those are businesses that don't require us, us, our presence, our brand, our face, our anything. Mm-hmm. And those are the way those businesses were built from the ground up without having. Well, a, the cleaning business wasn't built that way. We've now put well, it in place for it to be that way. Yeah, but there was never our face in front of anything. That's true. So there was never any likenesses, any, any Photoshop, any photo ops, any. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that involved our personal cover. faces or or communication in those businesses that's the difference between also having a local based business local service business is that you could hire people to do the work and you don't have to do it yourself Mm -hmm. and it's not attached to your face or your brand what are some big local businesses that are attached to people's faces and brands or likenesses um oh like that that plumber that we had called out but i mean yes and no yeah anybody he just was he was just famous um service base like see when you turn your head, I'm sure they're oh, missing that audio. Sorry. I said service based. Um said service based and your mouth is like way over here. <laughs> like makeup artists? Yeah, I guess. They have like popular ones, like I think about famous celebrity ones. That's a service based business. Yeah, and their faces are attached to their brand. So their what I'm saying was brand. most local most local service based businesses don't have to have their face attached to their brand. So True. I could easily disassociate myself with our cleaning business, our virtual system business, our rental properties or, or car rentals, anything like that. I could remove myself from that business mm-hmm. and be totally fine. Now with the Hard Chimony brand, I know that we have to create content. Like, that's part of our job. So it goes sure. back to also the influencer that we mentioned early on. Like, we're on vacation. Our lifestyle is going to be at play. We're going to have to film content. We're going to have to post. We're going to have to do Insta stories. Yeah. But that's part I, of what we've built. And that's the way we built that business from the beginning. Now, imagine trying to remove yourself from that and having somebody else run it and manage it and there's no there's no part of your face ever on that page people well, start I to think say who the, the hell's running this is, though but I, what I think the difference is that and I've only learned this by following them from influencers is that you don't have to do it in the moment though because many influencers that I follow they now 
capture whatever and then like post it when they come back or post it days later it's not necessarily then because in the moment it takes away because i'm record if i'm recording directly in the story what song am i going to use now mm -hmm. i gotta put the caption am i using a filter like that takes away from me just doing like all right seven second video click and i'm done mm -hmm. so i think that makes a difference as well like how do you go about taking the content yeah about your you being involved and not being involved and stuff like that number one i hate the word influencer too why i just hate that word I think <laughs> I'm trying to maybe because you say it so much. It's like, oh, that I follow influencers. Yeah, it's like okay. Yeah, I enjoy my influencers that I follow. I guess it's like me saying, oh, I follow. You podcasts. follow influencers? I don't know. But going back to what your question, <laughs> yeah, I do, but dude, I don't call anyone influencers at all. But that's what they are. That's the difference. That means they also have their face attached to their business, which means that they can't ever. And all my influencers do too, but and I don't say their name. They can't disassociate themselves with their brand. They can't. I don't ever. say their name because you're not going to remember who I'm talking about. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah. So also, so your question was, how do you remove yourself when you are the face of your, your when you are yeah. a faced brand? I don't know if you can. I don't think, I don't think you can because. Oh, I have an idea. I don't think you can because of the nature of that business that you started. It started around you. It's revolved around you. It's revolved around your likeness. Now there's nothing that you could do without having that. Unless you start building other entities that don't require your, your face or your brand or your presence. So we started a heart tremony, let's say, I don't know, a couple series or something like that. Ooh. <laughs> and we started like a heart tremony <laughs> couple series, right? And we, and we started interviewing couples and then now we started sign up and now we took that and said, all right, now this is going to be its own thing. It's not going to have us in it. This like is like black its love. own. Yes. This is, this is its own brand. It doesn't require us. Okay. That would be an example of you taking your, your face brand and starting to build a faceless brand. Yeah. So now it doesn't require your, your likeness to be for it to work. Right. And so a way that I see around, it's not really around. And I'm just talking to you guys that may, I'm just thinking for those that want to maybe transition or have a business. Um, the way I see around it is I think about an influencer that I follow, Jaleesa Vaughn, out here in, D in Dallas, pretty popular. I don't want no more names in this podcast either. <laughs> pretty popular, pretty, pretty popular out here. <laughs> and when you say like, you can't, not you can't move away from you being on the brand nope i don't think that you can however i think that when you have people and things in place it no longer consumes you if that makes sense so you are not the one no longer posting the stories or you're not the one no longer having to edit your youtubes or you're not the one having to do your ads or whatever the case may be like you're recording it obviously because i can see that you're in it mm -hmm. but you're no longer having to commit that time to it so does it make a difference then at you're all still, no you're still committing the time as much time i should say you're not yeah i mean you're just outsourcing you're the just work outsourcing the work yeah it's still attached to you regardless it's still attached to you okay so that's not building a business that's going to be sustainable over the years because you still have to do it you still have capacity. to do it to some capacity you can't mm -hmm. outsource that ever Ever. But you can outsource like the picture taking. You can't outsource. Videos. No, you can never leave that business as a CEO because the CEO is you and you are the business. Yeah, that's that's just exactly what that becomes. That just becomes another job for you. So if you're starting mm -hmm. a business and your goal is to not be the, you're not your goal is to eventually sell. You can't even sell that. You can't sell. A, you can't sell your personal brand. Your oh, personal so likeness. influencers can't get out of being influencers. So you could you could trademark. You could you could license your likeness. Like you could put like Kylie Cosmetics on something else or Kylie, whatever they do that. Like that's yeah, what they yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Kardashian, this, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You could license your name, but at the end of the day, you are, you, you still got to show up to the reality TV for us you, to watch yeah, you. It's a, it becomes a prison at some point. And I'm only, yeah, it becomes a prison. Like you are the only person that could do that job. Now you start to like, even it, let's, let's, let's take that example of the Kylie Cosmetics, right? Mm -hmm. She has a, she has a brand. And her brand is her name. Her, her her brand is her family's name. She created her own business out of her name, mm -hmm. right? So she took that business. She created other entities. So she got the Listic Cosmetics Lingerie. Mm -hmm. She has lingerie. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's Rihanna. What okay. the hell? Is that? <laughs> All right. Cool. So let's, she uh, also has Kylie Baby. So products. Yeah. For babies. Exactly. So she took her. She took her name. 
which was her brand was her mm-hmm. name. It was the lip kit. And she created she created other entities with off of that name. Mm-hmm. So now she has to market a little bit. Like I'm I'm Kylie, so I have to put my name on it. I have to I have to do photo shoot stuff like that. Mm-hmm. All right, but I don't have to keep doing that. But I do have to still shoot content. That will always have her. It will never be a point where that business will ever say we will never see Kylie again. No, it will never be where we don't see the baby brand not attached to her kids or or her name or her face ever again. Yeah, even if she yeah, because I'm thinking now like she has models in the shoots and stuff. Yeah, she doesn't always show up, but there's times that she does. Same thing with like uh, Kim with her Skims line. Exactly, there's, she has models, but then she shows up in almost all. Of yeah, them. now you may not like you said you may not put the same amount of time in that you did when you first started, but at the end of the day, no one's going to buy something from a person's brand if if they're, they're not there. if that's the only thing they know about them, like your face, your body, who you are. If I never see Kim Kardashian again, I see her having products. It's like that doesn't make sense to me. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop buying it because she's not advertising. Her name is not on it. Her voice is not on it. Her body's not showing it. Yeah. So they're always going to be attached to that. And at some point, you got to realize that you want to build a business that can outlast just who you are as a person. Thinking ahead. Thinking, Thinking ahead. ahead. I think we all, when we start businesses, we are like. All right, what's the, what's the five dollars right now? What's the, mm-hmm. what's the money right now? And we don't think about where's it going to be in five years. And let's be honest, when we started our cleaning business, that was the same thing. We wasn't thinking where it was going to be in five years. Shoot, we where's it going to be in a month? <laughs> where's it? I mean, but now we have a different biz, uh, business mindset, and that's why we say like sometimes businesses aren't for everyone, which is okay. But you have to be thinking long term and there's somebody that i follow on instagram that i think she thinks long term very well she talks about it all the time of i'm planning out quarter one of 2023 and i'm like damn okay i'm trying to finish up july 2022 <laughs> and you're planning out like and she's like i'm planning out my exit strategy like what do i want this business to be like okay in two years i don't think i want to still be doing this so what do i what do i need to do to make sure it gets there and i think that makes a difference too so you can you sell that? Can you sell that? Can she sell that business? Yeah. That's what she's preparing it for to be sold. So it's not attached to her brand. It is, but it isn't. It is, but it isn't. Doesn't sound like. It is, but it isn't. Like you see her, you know her brand, but it can sustain on its own. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. It can sustain on its own, but she's been building it and making sure that it does that on its own. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes, that makes sense. So. When we talk like about cleaning business university, if you think about that, right? yeah, it has to be able to live beyond you. It has to be able to get to the point where like you aren't the face of it. So going back to your question, like how do you remove yourself from that business? You really can't. You could limit your time to time to do it. You could outsource it. You could hire. But at the end of the day, that's always going to be attached to you. It's a job and it's something that you got to perform. So that's a good question. You don't think cleaning business university can stand alone ever? I think it can definitely. Yeah. But that's not the Harchamoni brand. It's not the Harchamoni brand. But it is connected to us. But I'm it's saying, because you're us. saying it really can't, like if you start it one way, it's going to stay one way. Mm-hmm. But Cleaning Business University technically is started with people knowing us, but it can stand on its own, I think. Yeah. But you got to be able to build that. Like that's a be brandless. intentional about it. Yeah, that's a brandless business. And if we brought other people in and did it, like that'd be totally fine. Mm-hmm. But it's not attached to the Harchamoni brand. Like people find it, they may come to the Instagram page to see the Harchmony, but they they don't care about that. They yeah. don't care about what is the outcome of this 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 business that you are teaching me. Mm-hmm. I don't care anything about the Harchmony. I only care about cleaning business university, and that's what's going to teach me how to launch and scale my cleaning business without cleaning the houses. Link is going to be in the bio and the show notes. <laughs> but that's the intention that you got to have when you first start. So you could get to so let's say like we had dinner with someone and they're multi and they built like a platform to teach people how to trade, right and that platform itself can be sold. It's not atta- I think it's at this point where it's not even attached to their brand, their, their likeness or their brand anymore. Mm-hmm. That's a business entity that they built outside of that that doesn't require their face. Right. So that's so, another thing. So yeah, their, their brand and likeness can grow that business, but it's not solely attached to them. I think that goes back to what you were saying um, at the beginning. Like even if you start a brand that has your face attached to it, you can do something else that doesn't. Yeah. And that should be the goal. You want to make sure that you're not only attached to social media. Yes, we're absolutely. Also, yes, <laughs> it's great to post on social media. Yes, it's great to get get followers and help people on social media. But when you're building something, think about so, having something that's offline, something that people don't know about, something that people can't physically touch and reach you based off of how you show up today. 
if I curse, if I curse you guys out and you cancel me, yeah, you'll be able to find what else I do and what else I own because we post it everywhere. But the first thing you're going to cancel is this, the things you see that we're talking about right now today versus things that you don't see that we've been building. So, And, and I was just going to say a way to look at it is like if your social media platform shut down today, how would people find you? Mm. How would be people be able to purchase from you, find you, find your business, things like that? That will be very telling for you. That is what lit fire under us to like, okay, we definitely need to grow our email list because, yeah, we have, I don't know, close to 30,000 followers on Instagram, right? But we all know there's hackers out there. We all know Instagram does not belong to us. So if Instagram decides to shut down one day and be done. Which they have. They shut down one day and decided to be done? No, not done. Oh, like frozen. They're changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Things like that, then we'll be screwed. So how can people purchase from you or find you outside of your social media platforms? That is a big one that I think people just really rely on social media and it won't be here forever. And you do not own anything on social media unless it's like your blog, maybe. But, you know, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all these places, YouTube don't belong to you. Yeah. So we want you guys to start thinking about how can you build something off of social media, something offline. Um, everything is online, which is which is fantastic. It's more easily accessible. But how can you build something offline of who you are and your branding and likeness so that your business. it could be something that's potentially sellable and scalable, right? Because Sellable and scalable. There we go. That's the goal. You want to be able to create something that's scalable and be able to sell it down the line if that is your end goal. So start thinking about something that you could build that is not attached to your face, especially if you're ugly. <laughs> Don't cancel me for that. Ugly what? people, we love you. <laughs> what the hell? I'm kidding. I'm um, kidding. But yeah, we don't want you guys. We nah. Take this seriously. Start think about something that you could build that's not attached to your likeness, your face, who you are. Um, because that's very important. We want you guys to get take these gems and take them offline. Absolutely. So we want to say thank you for tuning in today, this week. As usual, make sure you comment, subscribe, like, share. Let your family know what we're doing, what we're talking about, friends. Please leave us a comment. Please rate us. It helps us to continue to grow. We are going for this 52-week streak. Hope you continue to join us along the way. Appreciate you guys being here. Let us know what you think about building that is off your brand, that's off your face, that's off your presence, so that you could take that, scale it, sell it if you want, so that if you get canceled, that's the last thing they worry about and not the first. <laughs> Appreciate you guys being here. Check out next week's episode. Every Tuesday we drop. So see you guys next week. Peace. Have a good day. This has been an episode of the Heart Talk Hustle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And follow Anthony and Janilka on Instagram at the Hartrimony. That's T H E H A R T R I M O N Y. Keep hustling, baby. Keep hustling, baby. Get that money. Get that money.